Hi, this weekly roundup was originally going to be published from the new studio, but it's still a little bit of a mess and I haven't quite finished the acoustic insulation. But on with the show. Over at Kickstarter, you can pick up a tiny castellated module with a SAM D21 on board. This is actually a pretty good idea as it handles all the support components for you, such as reset button, 3.3 volt regulator, LEDs, crystal, and filter caps. All you have to do is solder up the 22 by 18 millimeter board and you're home and hosed. The creator has also come out with an Arduino compatible PCB that you can also solder it to. This campaign is yet another debugger for a Cortex M MCU. However, this one claims to be not only providing programming and debugging capabilities, but provide zero wire trace, full GDB support, gang loading for mini production runs, multi-core support, Lua based scripting and support for new MCUs can be provided without firmware updates. Nice. I think this is another one I'll back. Here's another Arduino shield that seems to have the lot. It provides a small breadboard area as well as dual headers on every pin, so you can wire up your circuit while keeping an oscilloscope attached. Every GPIO also has an LED indicating the current state with very minimal pull-ups to avoid loading and can indicate pulses down to one millisecond. The Mega IO is a hat that provides a bunch of expansion options for your Pi. There's opto isolated digital inputs and outputs, zero to 10 volt analog inputs and outputs, open drain outputs, RS485, CAN, one wire, RTC, and 240 volt 10 amp relays. Basically, it has a lot. Okay, I originally thought that this next one was just another fume extractor thingy, but heck, this one has a PCB driving it. It not only provides PWM control over a small extraction fan, but auto shutdown and charging of an 18650 battery. You can charge via USB or also by QI pad. Nice. Over at Indiegogo, there's actually something interesting going on. The Libra computer guys have released another SBC called the Renegade Elite. This one runs the Hexacore Rockchip RK3399 SOC with 4 gig DDR4 RAM, eMMC socket, SD, SPI flash, gigabit ethernet supporting PoE, which is becoming absolutely essential these days. USB type C supporting both power and display port, HDMI, EDP, MIPI CSI, RTC, IR, and two 60 pin headers one which supports PCIe, the other for low-speed GPIOs. At 99 US dollars, it's pretty cool for the base SBC. Over at Crowd Supply in pre-launch, there's the Pix Blaster. This is an FPGA-based RGB LED controller that is capable of controlling up to 16,384 WS2812-based RGB LEDs at 60 frames per second. Wow! Not only that, but you can daisy-chain multiple controllers which, they claim, can control up to hundreds of thousands of LEDs, supports most digital signage software, and also via plain HDMI input. This is a pretty cool tiny spider robot, made from 3D printed parts, SG90 servos, and an 8 mega 328 as the brains. Each of the legs also has an AT Tiny 84 controlling the servo, an optical sensor, and piezo speaker, so I'm gathering it makes it easily extendable. It also has LiPo charging supporting a 250 mAh battery. Another tiny board, the Blist Nano, runs an NRF52832 MCU and breaks out 30 GPIOs on a tiny 10 by 7 mm board. Over at GripGets, Espressive have their ESP32 dev board up pretty cheaply. Only 14 US dollars. Nice. And a contender to the Sonoff devices is this ESP8266 based power switch, but with a well needed glass fuse for protection. You can also pick up the Elector Uno R4, which runs the upgraded Atmega 328PB. This gives you additional UARTs, SPI, ITC, PWM, timers, and OCM. The Solid Run guys are back with another SPC called the Clearfog GT8K. This is a networking based board running a quad core Marvel Armada 840 Cortex A72 SOC with 16 gig DDR4 RAM, 5 gigabit Ethernet ports, as well as a 10 gigabit uplink SFP 
three mini PCIe slots, USB 3 and a bunch of GPIOs. You'd be expecting to pay a bucket load for this sort of thing, but the 8 gig EMMC model comes in at 209 US dollars, which is pretty decent. But you can also get the 128 gigabyte EMMC model for 612 US dollars. Although that's not really needed as you can pick up SSDs pretty cheaply. I think I'll pick up one of these and do a review on it. The Banana guys have planned to release a new SBC called the Banana Pi P20. This runs an all winner H2 Plus with 512 meg DDR3 RAM, 8 gig EMMC, SD slot, 100 megabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI, and who knows if it's a Pi compatible 40 pin GPIO header. This board can be powered not only from a 5 volt 2 amp micro USB connector, but also over PoE. Nice. Another SBC that's in the planning stage is the Banana Pi R64, which is an upgrade from the previous R2. It runs the dual-core MediaTek MT7622 Cortex-A53 with 1 gig DDR3 RAM, SD, SATA, 5 gigabit Ethernet ports, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and also takes an optional 5G mini PCI module. Has the handy-dandy 40-pin GPIO header, which may or may not be a Pi header, and power is either from a 12 volt 2 amp DC jack or PoE. And they also have a small upgrade on their Banana Pi M2 Plus, which fixes their questionable power management design of the original M2. This now sports a PMIC, which is very much required for proper management of power on a SOC, but also gives people the opportunity to overclock or underclock the board. Finally, so if you're thinking of getting an M2, make sure it's a Rev 1.2 of the M2 Plus. Not to be left out, the Pi 64 guys have made available an enclosure that houses a Rock Pro 64 and compatible PCIe SATA card, giving you a pretty decent NAS setup. They provide not only the case, but power supply, heatsink, fan and SATA cables. But you'll have to provide your own SATA card. The Cadis guys are back again with a new SBC called the Cadis Edge. Well, it's actually a hybrid SBC and SOM, as it not only has a SOM edge connector, but breaks out USB and HDMI ports on the other side. The board runs the Hexacore Rockchip RK3399 with either 2 or 4 gig DDR4 RAM, 1632 or 64 gig MMC, Gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB Type-C, HDMI, PWM controlled cooling fan header, and also an STM8 MCU for power and boot management. Power is from either 5 to 20 volts over USB Type-C, SOM header, or soldable pads. Google is upping the ante on hardware with a new ASIC called the Google Edge TPU. It's designed for machine learning with some of the processing happening on board or you can connect to Google Cloud to greatly expand its capabilities. Skynet, here we come! If you want to get into it, they're also releasing this AIY Edge TPU dev board. This comes as a SOM and baseboard setup, with the SOM running a quad-core NXP ATM Cortex-A53 SOC with 1 gig DDR4 RAM, 8 gig EMMC, SD, TPU, coprocessor, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gigabit Ethernet, HDMI, USB Type-C, mic and speaker terminal blocks, and a probably maybe Pi compatible 40 pin GPIO header, who knows. Even though it's exactly the same footprint as a Pi, I doubt it'll be able to fit into any Pi cases with all those different connectors on board. Over at the Olimex blog, they mentioned a new SP32 based board, yeah, I know, it's yet another ESP32 based board, but this one is slightly different, as it provides a 100 megabit Ethernet port that also has PoE capability. Nice! Apart from that, it also contains all the usual LiPo charging, GPIO headers, and USB port that you see on all ESP32 based boards. Over at Rack Wireless, they have a new mini PCIe card that packs in a Quectel BG96 MB IoT and LTE CAT M1 module, which also supports GPS. Pretty cool little card for only 40 US dollars. But for an additional 10 US dollars, you can get a USB carrier for it. Over at Esprino, they have a handy LCD module in the familiar Arduino format. This runs the NRF52832 MCU, so of course has Bluetooth, but also has NFC tag. 128 by 64 LCD, thermometer and battery sensor. 
and breaks out 20 GPIOs onto the Arduino compatible headers. You can power it from a CR2032 coin cell or USB and since it's from a Sprino, it can be programmed using JavaScript. NX-ELEC has launched another take on an SBC with the InnoStick 6. The board looks suspiciously like a Pi Zero, but not really, as it has a 50-pin GPIO header and runs a 900MHz IMX6 ultralight Cortex-A7 SOC with 512MB RAM, 16 or 32 gig EMC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB and micro USB ports, MIPI CSI and LCD interfaces. Over at Tindy you can pick up an 8085 based SBC. Cool. It's an old school through hole kit with 8085 CPU, 62 kilobyte RAM, 32 kilobyte ROM, UART and support components. Can be powered from a 5 volt 1 amp DC supply. Now you can use any stock ATX PC power supply to drive your Pi. The board has some basic power control, screw terminals and a stacking header so you can still add on other Pi hats. The DAC Berry guys are now selling their RDY board on Tindy. This is a Pi hat with onboard PCM5142 DAC providing up to 384 kHz at 32-bit resolution and an IR sensor. Nice. Then there's this guy who's selling a Pi based projector. <laughs> what the heck? I mean this is... Oh, wait, hang on. That's my board. The Pi projector allows you to use a Pi Zero W on the DLP2000 mini projector, which was originally designed for the BeagleBone Black. Rev 2.0 of the Pi projector adds in LiPo battery management, which means you can get one hour of video per amp hour of battery. So a 5 amp hour battery will get you 5 hours of continuous video playback. Audio is via Bluetooth and there's a bunch of GPIOs broken out. So it really is a portable Netflix and chill device. I don't have any in stock at the moment, but taking expressions of interest. If there's enough people, I can order a larger quantity and reduce the price. This ad is sponsored by JLC PCB. They currently make all my PCBs and if you bought one of my Pi projectors uh, you would actually be able to see firsthand uh, what the quality is like uh, because that's where they come from. So JLC PCB are currently offering 10 PCBs for only 2 bucks and if you're a first time customer you can pick up a $20 discount on your shipping. So um, what are you waiting for? Um, make your own PCB. If you want to know how to make a PCB you can check out my videos on that. Oh if you're wondering where JLC PCB man is, um, he's a little bit sore from the gym. Back in weekly roundup number 46 we saw the XN Mini on Indiegogo. Well now it's up on Tindy. It's a pretty tiny board running the SAM D21 and pushing out 11 GPIOs. Over at DF Robot they have a handy 212 by 104 pixel e-ink display that fits straight onto a Fire Beetle and accessed over SPI. They also have a handy LCD display with RGB backlight controlled by ITC and running off 3.3 or 5 volts. There's also the SIM 7000E based Arduino Shield which gives you GNSS, LTE, CAT M1, MBIoT, Edge and GPRS. Nice to see prices of mobile communication boards coming down. The BME 680 is a MEMS sensor capable of providing general air quality info with onboard temperature, humidity, atmospheric and IAQ sensors. Access via ITC and runs off a 3.3 or 5 volt DC supply. I really need to get a bunch of these since I need a grunty switch mode power supply to handle all those LED panels I got from a dumpster dive a while ago. This one can push out a steady 5 volt DC at up to 8 amps and it's a mean well after all so it's pretty good stuff. Sparkfun also had this tiny castellated board running an AT Tiny 84 and breaking out 9 GPIOs. Programming is over a standard USB with the preloaded firmware and powered either by USB or via castellated pad. Now I used to have a bunch of these in my stock of electronics components but I tossed them out during a tidy up the other day. Shame really. I have a use for them now. Over at Adafruit they have a 152 by 152 pixel 1.54 inch e-ink display. What's really cool about this one is that it has onboard static RAM to hold display frames so you don't have to code up any complicated frame buffering. 
Not only that, but there's an onboard SD slot to hold data. Access to RAM, display and SD card are of course via SPI. Over at Seed Studio they have an FM receiver module based on the RDA 5807M. Capable of receiving your favourite FM channel on a wide 50 to 115 MHz frequency range. Control is via I2C and runs off a 3.3 to 5V DC supply. What would be really cool is a board that can transmit on unregulated FM frequencies. So let me know in the comments below if you find one. Gapuino, or however you say it, is a pretty cool Arduino format board from Seed Studio, which runs the GAP8 IoT SOC. This little beast contains 8 RISC-V compute cores and 1 RISC-V controller core, combined with 512 megabit flash and 64 megabit DRAM on a hyperbus it makes it an ideal board for AI or machine learning. Not only does it support the standard Arduino GPIO headers, but a HiMax connector supporting 5 cameras. This allows you to do object detection and tracking. The other good thing about this SOC is that it has a very low power consumption. Over at Palolo they have a motor driver Pi hat capable of driving two DC motors or one bipolar servo at up to 2.6 amps from a 4.5 to 28 volt DC supply. The board can also power the Pi and contains reverse polarity protection just in case you stuff up somewhere. You know, I really need a decent uh, background for my videos in the new studio. So if you have any suggestions, you can leave a comment below. I could always add in some sort of tacky um, PCB wallpaper. I don't know. Maybe some fancy displays. I don't know. I have to say thanks to the patrons that have been supporting me on uh, Patreon and PayPal for the last two years. Um, it's been great getting to know them uh, over that time. They're an incredible bunch of people. And if you want to join that incredible bunch of people, uh, then you can support me on Patreon. And if you can't do that, uh, then you can always click on subscribe or the thumbs up button. Or if you want to do thumbs down, you can do that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week. I see whiffies.